Scientists say a powerful solar eruption today could trigger a strong geomagnetic storm. These storms typically make auroras more visible than normal, but concerns are growing that this one could also interrupt certain technologies. Our chief meteorologist Ginger Z has more on that. Ginger Airbus has warned that this type of space weather could corrupt flight data. They even had to send in a fix last month to try to get ahead of this, a software fix. So what do we need to be worried about in terms of these solar storms? Well, I would say instead of being worried, you should probably just be more alert, aware, and prepared. Yes, we are learning a lot more as time goes on, but there are warnings that we could see future superstorms from the sun that could damage important infrastructure. And that's really the problem. Scientists estimate that the likelihood of an intense or damaging solar storm, which we have not been seeing, uh, could happen in the next century, and that percent is 12 percent or less. So it's nothing to sneeze at. Should know about it. It's also important, though, to remember that we aren't at risk physically from space weather, but government agencies and major industry do need to take it all seriously because the consequences are quite big in our connected world. A very big storm has the potential to do significant damage to our satellites, which everything relies on, and power infrastructure. So how do you forecast these storms and how accurate are those forecasts? Well, that key responsibility is reserved for just a few people. <laughs> Actually, it's a, a small group of meteorologists at NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, the national hub for forecasting space weather. They rely on satellites that act like our distant weather stations. And there's a brand new space weather satellite that is scheduled to go into operation in mid-2026 called the Space Weather Follow-On. That has a state-of-the-art suite of instruments and processing system. It will monitor the sun's outer atmosphere for large eruptions, and this, along with other satellites, will then provide early warnings for destructive space weather events. It's going to stay about a million miles from Earth, so it's going to give us a critical heads up on the actual intensity and magnetic orientation of those incoming solar winds. This allows industries to prepare before the storm hits. As for accuracy, space weather prediction, yeah, we've gotten better over the last year, a couple of years, but we can reliably predict when a storm will hit. It's just the biggest challenge being intensity and impact. So we're never quite sure how the solar storm will affect us exactly, but that new satellite should help that. We're also going to see, you know, beautiful aurora. So you've got like, like that, that combination. <laughs> uh, but when the sun sends out that blast of energy, the impacts are not on people. We want to really emphasize that, but it really is infrastructure. So satellites can be damaged by increased radiation or they can be pulled off course. If a communication satellite fails, it affects everything from TV signals to weather forecasts, which we don't want. Uh, solar storms can also impact our power grids, which also we do not want. They have been responsible for blackouts in the past, but most geomagnetic storms can be well managed by the people who run our power systems, because that's the thing is we've done this before. They know how to kind of prepare for it and to react. Um, but remember, navigation systems, including your car's GPS, my husband would be lost. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, he so wouldn't make it to work. <laughs> Airplane navigations, a big deal and can be impacted because the storm will distort that upper atmosphere, which the signals have to pass through. So that isn't that common, but it can also impact astronauts who are working, you know, in orbit. Interesting. Uh, on the upside, we could get a nice view, right? So yeah. how does that work? How do you get an aurora from a storm like this? And are we likely to see them this time around? Yeah, so the solar energy is coming at us, right? It's, and then it hits our magnetis magnetosphere, our magnetic field, and then it's kind of displaced or accelerated toward the poles. Once it's there, it's colliding or interacting with oxygen or nitrogen. And when it does so, it creates this burst of light. And so that's part of why we see that. Um, I always think it's interesting that in more oxygen particles, you're getting more more of the reds and greens in nitrogen, it's the greens and purples.